One of the more difficult areas for a beginner to get the head around when starting out in astrophotography is the topic of polar alignment and understanding why we need it and how to achieve it. Actually, it's not that difficult when you understand the basics and with modern technology on hand to help you, it's easier than it's ever been. In today's show, we'll unpick the topic of polar alignment, why and when you need it, and to look at some of the tools available to images to make it happen. Let's get into it. Hey, my name's Simon. Welcome to AstroWorks, your friendly guide to the world of astronomy, full of hints and tips how to get the best out of this amazing hobby. Now, mention the term polar alignment to many astro images and it brings them out under sweat and gets them shaking. But there's nothing to be frightened about polar alignment. The actual process is really easy to understand and just as easy to accomplish. So what is polar alignment and why do we need to do it? Well, first we need to dip into why we need it. Due to the alignment of our planet's axes, the stars in our night sky follow an arc centered around the celestial poles. You can see these nicely demonstrated in star trail images centered on the pole. In the north, this is centered on Polaris. And here in the southern hemisphere, we're not as lucky as the northerners. We don't have a bright star at the pole, only a dim star called Sigma Octantis, the area we know as Polaris Australis. If we used an old azimuth mountain to track the stars as they rotate around the pole, we'd need to do two moments to follow an arc. For example, here you can see we'd need to move right in azimuth and up in altitude to stay on track with the arc the stars are making. To get around this issue, astronomers invented the equatorial mount. In this mount, the telescope is rotated around the pole on an axis known as the right ascension, or RA for short. That's this axis here. The RA angle is based on the rotation of our planet and even measured in hours, minutes and seconds. For each hour of Earth time, the sky rotates 15 degrees to our fixed point on the planet's surface. So the mount is set to track at that rate, known as the sidereal rate. Now to reach a star either side of the pole, we simply need to offset the amount either side of the pole. This is called the declination angle, or DEC for short. This is this declination here. Now we can reach any part of the sky and only have to rotate the mount in RA to keep up with the stars, minimizing the amount of movement required to one that simply speeds up or slows down to keep the stars tracked accurately. Now we can add a small camera and some controls to tell the mount the corrections required, and we can have a super accurate way of tracking the night sky. We'll cover off guiding in another video. Now to stay on track and not have the stars drift, the RA axis of the mount needs to be accurately aligned with the celestial pole, and this is what we mean by polar alignment. The process simply aligns the polar axis of your mount with the north or south celestial pole. And by alignment, it's worth remembering that this is a physical alignment. You can even polar align with the mount turned off. Polar alignment is the most essential step towards a night of visual observation or astrophotography using an equatorial mount. And once achieved, you can accurately track objects in space of visual astronomy or photography. And polar alignment can be either easy to understand for some and damn near impossible for others. There's so much information online that's often wrong and sometimes it can be a daunting prospect to a newcomer. How your polar align doesn't change regardless of what equatorial mount it is. You're gonna use the mount's azimuth controls and the elevation controls to align the axes to the polar position. How you achieve this can vary depending on your mount and your chosen approach. So let's look at some of the methods and what they offer. Now for users of a camera and tripod or a simple visual astronomy, it can be as simple as placing the mount on the ground and aligning it roughly to the north or south pole. You can use a small compass, even the one on your phone would do. And while this won't see perfect alignment, it would be fine for wide field imaging rigs and short exposures, or for visual use where the user can give the mount a nudge with the hand controller every now and again. Now some mounts also have what is called a poloscope installed. This is a small eyepiece installed through the RA axis that projects an alignment graticule over the stars that the user can then use to align the mount to a known star pattern based on time and date. This is a relatively antiquated tool these days and relatively inaccurate as well, but okay for visual use. While you don't need batteries and a computer for this method, you will need to get down on your hands and knees, perhaps on wet ground, to peek through that poloscope. I'm not sure about you, but I'm not too keen on that idea, so I'd highly recommend you find another method if you're a newcomer to the hobby. Technology is definitely your friend here. 
There are quite a few electronically assisted methods to polar alignment. Some might already come installed on your new mount. Most of them take an image of the stars around the pole and then calculate the offset from your mount to the actual polar position, which you then remove by using the azimuth and elevation bolts. These are far easier to use than a polar scope, or the downside is you will need some form of PC or tablet. There are quite a few options available, so let's take a look at a few of them. For owners of iOptron mounts, you have the option of using a small camera and software package known as iPolar. Depending on the model, this might be installed in the RA axes or on an adapter bracket. For other mount users, you can also use a system called Polemaster. This is very similar. This is another little polar camera that uses software to align the mount. This was the first polar alignment tool and really set the scene for electronic polar scope alignment methods. A wide range of adapters for these are available for many different mounts. For users who are planning to guide their mount, you can also use a piece of software called SharpCap. Now, in my opinion, this tool is a bargain at $15 per year for the full license. The alignment process in SharpCap is fast and easy to do, and it even gives you a nice and easy to understand display of which direction to move. There are a number of other Astra imaging packages that also include polar alignment tools. Nina, for example, has a built-in polar alignment too as well, and it's free. Now the downside to all this is that you need to carry a PC into the field with you. Not too much of a problem if you're planning to image, but if you're doing visual use, these might be more problematic. There is a PC-less approach though to polar alignment available, and this is via the little ZWO ASI Air. The ASI Air is built-in polar alignment tools and uses the main imaging camera versus the guide scope, so you can use this to align a DSLR or mirrorless camera and lens for example. The upside of the ASI Air is that it uses a mobile phone or tablet as the interface and you don't need to drag a PC into the field with you. And the Mini, for example, is a very low power device. You can even power it off a USB battery. For a newcomer, this is a very attractive option, and one I can highly recommend. So let's take a good look at how we achieve this in practice. In this example, I'm gonna use my favorite tool, the ASI Air, and I'll show you how to quickly and easily polar align. There are a few prerequisites to polar alignment, so let's take a look at those first. You will need your mount connected to the ASI Air as if you were going to image, and the main camera will need to be connected, although it doesn't need to be cooled at this stage if you have a cooled camera. For some mounts like the AVX, the CGM, CGX and EQ6s for example, you will need to do a rough polar alignment by placing the mount on the ground and then doing a one star align. It can be very rough, it's not too important to be super accurate at this stage, but this ensures the mounts know where they're pointing from startup. Some mounts, like the iOptron CEM range for example, can calculate this in the hand controller once they have the time, date and the GPS location locked. These don't need a one star align, so you can simply place the mount on the ground outside facing your pole and turn it on. Make sure your counterweight down and the scope is upwards, just like this position, although I am missing the counterweight. You should also ensure that your scope is in focus as it's going to use a plate solve to find where it's pointing in the sky. So do check you have good focus first. Of course on the ASI Air you have these tools built in as well. And if you have the ZWO EAF you can initiate an autofocus run manually. Now we're ready to polar align. Choose the polar alignment screen from the main menu on the right hand side. On the polar alignment screen the main controls you're concerned about are on the right hand side of the page here. Here you can set the exposure time and the binning level that you'd like to use. For a normal one-shot colour camera and no filters, usually 2-3 to three seconds will be fine. But for narrowband filters you may want to extend those exposures longer. Larger chips can also be binned to reduce image download times. Then you can start the process by clicking the start icon. The ASI Air then will take an image and plate solve. The ASI Air will take an image and plate solve this. It will then step through moving the mount RA by 60 degrees and then take another image and solve it. At this point it's going to tell you on screen how far away from the pole you are. And then you'll need to move the mount's azimuth and elevation knobs to move the mount into place. Don't touch the mount hand controller, you need to physically move the mount at this point. Use small amounts of change on these controls, it's easy to fly through the adjustment required and end up having to come back the other way. 
A tip here is that you can tick the auto refresh box if you want the ASI Air to keep taking pictures and solving them, or you can just initiate it manually. I find kicking off an exposure solve combination easier while I'm fiddling with the mount controls in the dark. Now you don't need to get your alignment exactly to zero, but the closer you are the less you'll need to guide out the errors or less drift you'll see in the eyepiece. Still a few more key features to look at in a moment, particularly if you can't see the pole. But if you like today's video then do give that like button a thumb and if you want to see more of this kind of material then we highly recommend you subscribe and that we can notify you of new content as soon as we publish it. Now let's take a look at how the ASI Air can save you if you don't have a clear view of the pole and this is a pretty amazing feature. All Sky Polar Alignment is a fabulous tool to help you polar align if you can't see a clear view of the sky to do a normal alignment. In this method you can polar align anywhere in the sky in the same way as the process I just showed you. You can turn on All Sky Polar Alignment under the eye icon in the top menu, as it's still an experimental mode. And here you can also find how far away from the pole you're aiming at to give the system a hint of solves. This way you can polar align even if you can't see the pole because of a tree or a roof, which is a real help for many. Just remember to turn it on first. Using the All Sky Polar Alignment routine means you can then place the mount and align roughly to your pole, but not use the normal alignment process. Now you can salute to anywhere you can see the stars and continue polar alignment as normal. How cool is that? Another good tip here is once you have polar alignment completed, then return the mount to home using the go to home button on the mount page. Then, once at the home position, slew the mount using the joystick controllers on the main page so that the RA and deck axes are well away from the pole. Take an image and plate solve this using the solve button on the left hand menu of the main screen. Now, when solved, use the sync to mount button, and this will save the actual pointing position of the mount to the ASI Air. So, as you can see, there are lots of options for polar alignment tools, so which one is best? Well, that's something that you'll have to work out depending on what mount you own and your style of operating. But for ease of use, simplicity, and the fact that it's built into a tiny portable computer that can use a mobile phone, then the ASI Hair has to win it hands down. I hope today's video helps you understand that polar alignment is not that difficult to achieve. When you understand why it's used and how to do it using some of the tools, it can be really easy. And like most things, once you've done it a few times, it'll get quicker and easier, and you can narrow this down to just a few minutes and then be on to imaging. Thanks for watching. As always, do reach out if you need any questions answered. Don't forget, we'll see you at Neve, so do look out for us. And as always, we wish you clear skies.